Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. you pay attention to what I'm telling you. It will not make you hate anybody, but you will be an agent of balance. You will know where to run to your house and say, I know where the problem is now. When we got born again, not that the pastor was bad, but the system of mentorship is why darkness prevails over this family. The most powerful prayer warrior prays for 15 minutes because he's following the path of the business mogul who has everything working in place. And remember, your assignment is to be an apostle or to be a prophet. And there is a requisite level of spiritual investment you must make per day to attain unto that. Per day is added. If it does not match up after a threshold period, you will repeat it again. So when everybody is praying one, one hour, you can finish and you want to turn your plate upside down. God said, I hope you know you are going seven days. He said, Lord, why me? And he says, have you forgotten the prophecy your mother told you? What did the man tell her before you came? The person who is your prayer partner, the problem he's praying for, you are the answer. So you can't pray the same hour just because you started together. You are part of the people, he's part of the people you were sent to. There are people because of their assignments, you can't enter a relationship twice. God will prohibit you. Any guy that there's nothing like trial and error, say, let's see how to move. The nature of the child that must come out from your womb, that there, there is a preservation. Are we together? Yes. And like Abimelech, when you look at a particular lady, say, My God, I'm considering you will have a dream that night. God will say, Don't near this girl. You can choose anybody around, but there is prophecy. There's too much on this destiny and the womb that that child will bring for you to be careless and in the name of love destroy that person. Now, when that person is teaching about relationship, this is going to be the person's template. If you ever have more than two or three people, you are not in the will of God. That's not true. It was a template defined because of the nature of what you are carrying. Imagine that Mary was going to teach about fertility. Do you know what the theology of Mary will be? Men are not very needed. Ghosts and spirits can get people pregnant. And she has the results. How many people in the Bible did the Holy Ghost get pregnant? When you build doctrines out of personalized dealings listen very carefully I, there's no time i would have shown you a man in the bible sir when jesus was speaking to the seven churches in asia minor that represented the catholic church the universal church prophetically he spoke about a particular prophet called balaam 
Huh? When you read from Numbers 22 to 24, you will see what the Bible calls the error of Balaam. What was the error of Balaam? Balaam was called to by Barak to, prof, to prophesy against the nation of Israel. And he, he knew that God was not in him with him. Why? Because there was a formation of Israel, the ark being in the center, and that formation was a spiritual system of fortification. The ark being in the center and they were all stationed according to their tribes. That spiritual formation cannot allow a cause to work. So he knew that trying to cause them would be a waste of time. When you study there, Balaam used divination. And when he tried, it still didn't work. And he told them, he said, do you know what? I've done my best. And they said, I know your problem. They motivated him with a lot of money. They sent their nobles. They used influence. They said, Come, there has to be a way. You are not a small prophet. We know you. You just don't want to do this thing. And he was motivated. And then they now sent nobles with money. And he was now in that era. And then eventually, when you study, Balaam used a strategy. He said, I can't curse them, but I can share with you something that will make them curse themselves. He says, the only way you can curse these people is to make them do something against God. And so he said, try to introduce a system of immorality there and you will corrupt the spiritual formation and by themselves they will be cursed. Balaam. Now listen very carefully. When Apostle Peter was teaching this, Apostle Peter called it the way of Balaam. So it had moved from an error, as you know theologically, to the way, a methodology. It started as a man's weakness, but now it had grown, it is now a formula. By the time you get to Revelations, it's called the doctrine of Balaam. So God told me, you will never have a church in the U.S., for instance. That is a personalized dealing. It's a way, an error. I can now begin to preach. There's no need having churches overseas. It becomes a methodology. Why? Because I will mentor people after that template. They will write books after that template. Bible schools will adopt it in honor of the mentor who taught it. And then after 10, 15 years, Nobody can argue with it again. You don't have the power to argue with it. The people that have received it are too influential for you to fight it. Then a time comes when it becomes the fabric of a Bible school. That means the, the, the teaching, the entire Bible school was taught from that error. Hallelujah. Is God helping us tonight? The danger of personalized dealings. There are certain things that are my personal covenant with God. I will never teach it in the open. These are things between me and God. They are the preservers of the grace upon my life. It's an ordinance between me and God. To say, son, I understand the path I'm bringing you to. And based on where I'm taking you, I will create a formula and a set of disciplines. It's not convenient, but that is the price you have to pay to host this level of grace. The jurisdiction of mentorship must be scripture, not experience. Experience only forms supporting structures. When the foundation is there. And that from a child, thou hast known the holy scripture that is able to make you wise. Are we together now? Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. Please give it to us. Let's hurry up. Goodness. You know, I've not even covered. You see, eh? conferences like this. Real believers meeting takes time. Oh. Our fathers, you know those days, Kenneth E. Hagin, they will spend 30 days non-stop. If you don't know God, they will, you wonder what are they teaching. This is what happens to a preacher who doesn't know God. If all you do is to download messages, you will be tired. You can't have the grace to exhaust three hours. It's not very easy to steal information like that and remember. It must be your experience.
Where are we? Acts chapter 20. Please read it with me. One, two, go. And now, brethren, I commend you to and to stop, stop, stop. This is Apostle Paul, accredited and approved by God, and also approved by miracle signs and wonders, approved by the threefold cord of the church that can eat, not be easily broken. He received the hand of fellowship. His apostolic calling was validated by the appearance of Jesus. Please keep that scripture there. He's, it's like a handover service. And he's saying, look, I am concerned about your safety. And I need to show you the things that, ju that define the jurisdiction of safety. I commend you first to God. Number two, to the word of his grace. And he says it is able to build you up, number one. Number two, to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Experiences are risky. The margin of error there is very wide. I can have an experience that is 60% revelation and 40% flesh. And because I'm still growing spiritually, as at the time I'm teaching it, I will not know the flesh is 40%. So I will teach everything together. When you now learn it and you are suffering from it, I will now grow later and discover that what I taught you before, that you have believed so much and you have mentored others is not correct. Is God helping us? It's a revival series. We came to be challenged, to be more circumspect with our approach. The idea is not to run away from people. The idea is not to be sarcastic, but the idea is to understand that the surest security is the jurisdiction of scripture allotted to help men know God. Experiences are powerful. Let me tell you by the grace of God and you know this, I live in the realm of experiences. You see that? The number of things I see per day, I say it with all humility. If many people see it, it will be enough to write a book. You cannot imagine how many things I've seen from the time I started preaching. It takes discipline to see so much and yet be quiet. Moses was a prophet and his mouth did not open. When small of his spirit came on 70 elders, not one of them could keep quiet. Yet one man was holding all that and he was quiet. Every dimension of the spirit is, is garnished with self-control. Anything minus self-control will bring misuse. You need self-control. There are doctrines that we have brought in church that sabotage the will of man. And when you study the ordinances of man with God alongside redemption, there are fundamental rights that God gave man not the new man in Christ man man as an entity there are things that God gave man and any preacher that tries to take it from you is is bewitching you one of it is the right to choose this is something that God gave man you don't have to be born again once you are a man it is part of God's gift to you The riskiest thing to ignore is salvation. Even salvation submits to that law of your ability to choose. I said before you, life and death. Won't you help me by choosing life for me? Do you want me to die? I said before you, life and death. If there was only the tree of life in the garden, then God could not say man loved him. The proof of obedience is when you are given the opportunity to disobey. If you are not given the opportunity to disobey, you cannot be said to have obedience. Apostasy. So there are so many of us right now, probably, in our different prayer groups. You know, there was a time that there was such a move where I come from, you know. Zaria is a place that God has really blessed with an investment of his spirit. And there was a time that a great move started. It didn't last two weeks. And God withdrew that move till tomorrow. I will tell you, 
by the grace of God, we had the privilege to be some of the pioneers of these dimensions of God. It was when people started having supernatural experiences. They would see feathers, gold dust, and all of that kind of thing. They would be praying and oil. I had these experiences where oil, physical oil, would come out of my eyes. These things were emblems. They were similitudes. They were messages. They were not supposed to be magnified. One of the major reasons why the Holy Spirit conceals his personality and does not come in bodily form is because that is the only way to make us keep our gaze on Jesus while benefiting from his ministry. If the Holy Spirit reveals his personality, the nature of his training you will connect you too much to honor Jesus. And his assignment is to reveal the Christ. So his identity is concealed. So that you only look at the man, Jesus. Who is the express image of God. I teach you sound doctrine. Many, 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 many nonsense that believers are learning. I'm not being sarcastic. You know I teach from a heart of love. I tell you is the reason why many people cannot experience God. Is the reason why needless fears continue to come. Is the reason why pressures continue to mount. There is a formula to knowing God that we are not following well. We are just in number one. Apostasy. The first reason why things could be wrong. The shepherds themselves. There are shepherds that kill sheep. Do you know that the sisters of Moses' wife, if you read in the Bible, right? The wife of Moses. Notice that it was shepherds that came to bully them by the well. Shepherds that should be taking care of sheep. Yet they were the ones who came to bully them. And that, that mystery still happens in the body of Christ. That shepherds come to threaten the bride of Christ. Threaten the sheep. Apostasy. All kinds of doctrines that came as a result of personalized dealings. Magnifications of emblems above Christ. Oil. Maybe water. Whatever it is. I'm not saying these things are wrong. Please, I hope you understand. That's why I said, you see, I, I apologize before I started. I told you this night's teaching is not really for a believer who just gave his life to Christ. Because um, if I don't clear this, I'm going to shoot myself on the leg because of the second point that is coming. Are we together this morning? It's very important for us to understand this. Preserve your personalized dealings. Only bring them out when you have established something from scripture and then it can be directly supported by your experience. That way it becomes edifying to the saints. I cannot build a series out of my experiences. If I describe to you now what happened when Jesus appeared to me, you'll be surprised how many other people Jesus has appeared to that the similitude of the encounter will be different. I cannot build a doctrine out of it. Even if I write a book on it, I have to put a disclaimer that this represents my experience. It's an attempt to support the truth from scripture. A man who has never seen a vision of Jesus but can understand by the ministry of the Holy Spirit from scripture will get a more accurate picture of Jesus. Even when Paul saw Jesus, he was still referred to back to be mentored correctly. Not even an encounter with Jesus will erode the need to be taught. The word himself went to the temple to learn about himself as a protocol. It's an ordinance. Imagine what Jesus was doing in the temple when he was reading about himself. Otherwise, we cannot be told to look up to Jesus. It's why we have invited demons into our lives. And these are the loopholes. This is why I'm teaching you this. Lest Satan should gain an advantage on us. These are the vantage systems in the kingdom. The loopholes that are left in our spiritual lives. That the devil continues to enter. And when we are being prayed for to minister deliverance. The demons easily stroll out. Because they know that the level of spiritual eye it takes to close that loophole. 
It's not an average preacher that will have it. So they are, they are at liberty to go out anytime you drive them. And they continue to mock us. This is one of the mysteries behind the tragedy of repeated deliverances. That people are delivered now. And the devil, all he needs to do is manipulate any good thing in you. Kindness, love, compassion, and they are back in. The most powerful form of deliverance is preached. To preach deliverance to the captives. More than conducting it. Because in the preaching of it, a doorway and a spiritual gateway is closed. Let's pray in the spirit for one minute. Shalabrandes kebarusi hasadash. Hallelujah. Thank you guys. God bless you. The second thing that could be wrong, let me just wrap it up quickly. The second thing that could be wrong is the quality of the spiritual information. Listen very carefully. The quality of the spiritual information you receive will form the fabric of your, the strength of your spirit man. The Bible lets us know in Genesis that God made many lights. Everybody say many lights. Many lights. Light is light. God made many lights. Are we together? And light in scripture is symbolic of many things. One, illumination. Are we together now? Two, the modus operandi of the kingdom. The system of operation. The animal kingdom has a dimension of God's light that coordinates their operation. I hope you know that. Yes. Is the reason why they too at their own level have some level of order the plant kingdom have a level of light mankind has a level of light that's why when a man acts depraved god will refer him back to a lower dimension of his light to learn when you are a lazy man god will refer you back and say go to the ants you sluggard when nebuchadnezzar was proud god turned him into a beast with the brain of a human being for seven years. At the end of it, Nebuchadnezzar raised a song, a verdict of worship to God. So there are many lights. Listen very carefully. The quality of the spiritual information you receive matters. Any light will not lift you. Please listen very carefully. The same way any drug will not cure you. I can't go to the pharmacist and say, okay, do you know what? Uh, I think my leg is paining me. What do you have there? And they say, just stretch your hand. Whatever you pick, is, is, it, it has nerve that number. Truly, it does. And there are drugs that if you are not sick and you take them, they will make you have that sickness before they treat you. Have you seen how this thing works? The quality of the spiritual information that we receive, it constructs not only our understanding, but it becomes the gateway for the Holy Spirit or demon spirits to access our lives. A mindset is a sustained thinking pattern. It can authorize darkness, can authorize light into your life. Now, when your mindset has been corrupted by a a very inferior communication of light. Demon spirits can come and build a fortification around it. That's what makes a mindset to become a stronghold. At that point, you can make even the word of God to be of none effect. Praise the Lord. The quality of spiritual information. It is important. There's an information people have heard about spiritual growth that stops them from growing there's an information people have heard about about god that have made them to be afraid of god there's something people have heard about the devil that have made them to trivialize the devil or exaggerate his operations are we together it matters who tells you what it matters who mentors you let me go to the third point very quickly. 
the third point is where I want to dwell a little. What could be wrong? Number three. I touched on it back at home yesterday before we left and I just felt a need to add it to our discussion today. The third, and this for me, is one of the major problems. I think in my opinion, even greater than apostasy and greater than the quality of spiritual information, this third point is a serious point. I call it the defined pattern or sequence of spiritual growth. Now listen very carefully. There is a sequence of spiritual growth that will make the saints to be mature. That means that the body of knowledge allocated for our growth requires a level of spiritual architecture to benefit us. The, you cannot have a random accumulation of light and truth and grow. No. There must be a sequential arrangement for it to profit you. Let me give you an instance. A believer should not get born again. And the first thing you are teaching him is relationship or prosperity. That is truth, but it's not sequentially arranged. You have not taught him how to tame the flesh. Now you are teaching him how to bring a lady. And he does not know what to do about his passions around her. Because the growth was not sequential. Are you getting what I'm saying? Many of us are victims of what I'm sharing now. It's true. Thank God for a church like this. It's dangerous to see a believer who just got born again. And you are teaching him about dimensions of financial prosperity. You are killing that person because the loss that comes with money requires a particular knowledge of God to be able to make sense of it. Even God respected money. So that gentleman from born again, the next thing he handles money. And money begins to drive his entire life. And your mentorship cost it. What is happening right now, especially because we are a generation of enlightened people. All you need to go, do is go on Google. Go on YouTube. Are we together? All you need to do, I mean, there are thousands of sites streaming. Right now as I'm talking, millions maybe all around the world streaming different thoughts. And many of them are true. But the problem is that believers have not been mentored that truths must be sequentially arranged like a building. It says we all like living stones are being built into a spiritual house. Ask any architect here. You don't sit down and just combine anything anyhow. A zinc does not come after the foundation. You build the superstructure. So a zinc is required. But the usefulness of a zinc is seen when you have made the building to lintel level. Our obsession for scarce information as a ladder to get fame within the Christian circle. We drive ourselves to get any revelation possible. Why? Because on the strength of those revelations, we seem to have some accreditation and honor within our prayer groups, within our churches. Chances are that if what you teach is very simple and basic, the obsession for knowledge in our generation will cause men to trivialize you. So that passion will make you to go online. You just look at a topic, Gabata. You say, that's right. This is really what I need. My members have been trivial. I'm not saying those things are wrong. I hope you get what I'm saying. I mean, you get that word, Gabata, you are happy. What does it mean? A stone of judgment. And that becomes another series. There's nothing wrong with that. Except for the fact that most times we are so concerned about acceptance that we are not patient to understand the order and the sequence of spiritual growth. Notice how Jesus mentored the disciples. He started his mentorship by calling them. Then he started what we call the Beatitudes. He began to teach them sequentially. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. And then he began to teach them a lot of things. Notice the same sequence Paul takes in the book of Ephesians. When he begins to mentor believers, he starts by helping them understand their identity in Christ. The position of victory. Are we together? Then he now teaches them on the factors that make for a Christian character and lifestyle. Then he now shows them that you are not alone. This whole world lies in wickedness. So he mentors them on how to stay and how to be 
offensive sequence. There are people, the moment they get born again, the next lecture is a very drastic vision on Satan. Are we together? Now, that believer gets born again, and boy, that description is bad. And all through the, the, the Christian experience of that believer, the entire focus is what do I do with this man, Satan? Let me tell you, if Satan is taken out of the world today, people's situation will only improve a little. I know there are many places today that Boko Haram did not bomb. Just some careless boys just bomb. But since it will be an addition to them, they will claim responsibility. And the people that bombed it are angry. You are not the one that bombed it. We are the ones that bombed it. But they claim responsibility because it will magnify the threat and the perception of them. That's how Satan is. Anything you are, when he shares credit, he comes there and says, what did, what did I hear you say? I'm the one. Do not be ignorant of his devices. Is the word stratomai, his methodologies. He has his way of doing things. Satan is an opportunist. When he finds an opportunity for an applause, he's there to receive it quickly. Is God helping us? So there are many things we credit to the devil that the devil is shocked himself. Don't you know that Satan uses our experiences to learn too? Knowledge is not just in the realm of men. Angels learn from men. Satan learns from men. Man is God's highest creation. So all other civilizations depend on his operation to learn lessons. Is the reason why the gates of hell continue to transit too. There are many things now that were not recorded in the Bible except by prophecy because then hell had not transited to that level. The devil studies men to grow. This is the concept of what we know to be familiar spirits. That means spirits that are domiciled within a territory and their assignment is to study men within that territory for a long time and archive the loopholes in men. This becomes their system of advantage. That's why people from territories are associated with certain weaknesses. Is the study and the research of hell for many years. They have built a, an arsenal of victory from the weakness of man. When Jesus was fasting, Satan knows that when men are hungry, hunger always takes men to Egypt. Hunger. Nobody calls men to Egypt. When you want a man to go to Egypt, manipulate the economy and hunger will always take Israel to Egypt. So when Jesus was fasting, Satan was already sure he would beat him hands down. After 40 days, guess the first person he met. It's amazing that many times your prayer and fasting doesn't drive Satan. It invites himself. Jesus is done fasting and the first person who shows up is Satan. And he's not shaking under the anointing and falling. And Satan says, Jesus, so you mean you went this far? All right, turn this stone to bread. And he studied Jesus. Because a normal man will be too hungry to not take advantage of that level of power. When a door is open before you and you refuse to go, it's a level of discipline that men do not have. Satan was testing the strength of, the, of, of his submission to the Holy Spirit and the first test was hunger. He was already full of the Holy Spirit and he, could, he wanted to detach the flesh from the influence of the Spirit to see how powerful he was. Satan can test how much you are submitted to God. Not by asking you, are you submitted to God? He would do something to your flesh. And he knows that the Holy Spirit cannot sponsor certain reactions. So when your vulnerability reacts, it's already proof. It's a litmus test. A young man should not see a lady and not be, what's the word now, seduced? Aroused. Sorry to sound explicit. So if as a young man, you can look at a beautiful lady with two of your eyes, you are not praying, you are looking at her and nothing happens to you. Satan knows that your strength is being outsourced, is outside you. 
Let me show you how Satan destroys men. I'm teaching many things this night. Satan, when he wants to destroy you, he will arrange a buffet of fleshly experiences according to the many flesh faculties of a man. And he will watch you. The menu you pick tells him which part of you has not submitted to Christ. This is what he was doing to Jesus. So the first test had to do with hunger. Is God speaking to us now? Individualism, hunger, turn this stone to bread. And he said, no, I've crossed that level. I'm that yielded to the Holy Spirit and not even my appetites can frustrate his workings. And Satan said, wow, I see you're a spiritual man. Let's go to test number two, your spiritual life. He took him to a holy city and dropped him at the pinnacle. And the assignment was fall from that height. Are you not a benefactor of God's grace? Fall, he will put his angels charge over you. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. The temptation of great men is to fall. That's how Satan tempts you. Because he says, God has made too much investment in you to allow people, to allow your fall destroy people. So it, he gives you the basis, the support systems to allow the flesh take advantage of you. He took him to a high, a holy city. The third test, when that failed, he took him to an exceeding high mountain and showed him the glories of the world and told him all the people that occupy these mountains, I put them there. Just bow to me. Business is a transaction. The commodity of exchange, let it be your soul. And in reward, I will give you influence over the systems. I know your degree of maturity by your vulnerabilities. When Satan keeps a woman or a man and you turn and mind your business, he will never use it again. He will now think and say, what does this man want? Then he will look at your landlord. He said, that's right. He will do something to your landlord to make him insult you in a way that you will say anything I get that can make money now. God, if you will not come and help me. He touches different aspects of your life and sees the reaction. Because any part that has been submitted to Christ, you cannot feel the impulses of Satan again. So when he touches you here and you are dead, he knows it's a waste of time. But he will usually find somewhere the way you will react, you say, I found it. He will stay there and invent a system of touching that aspect of your life. Are, are we together? There is a sequence for spiritual growth. All the truths you have now, let me tell you why many of us are not getting results from them. I will tell you why. Because although it is truth, it was not sequentially arranged. Let me use two or three people again. Gentlemen, please, can you come? All of you just stand facing this way. Just stand in front here. Look at this. I gave that example. Let me have one more person. We'll round up quickly. Am I boring you this morning? <laughs> Jesus. This is prosperity. This is what? Financial prosperity. A dimension. This is character and morality. This is science, wonders, ministry, destiny. This is relationship, marriage, and emotional entanglements. Now watch this. These are all dimensions of truth. Now, a believer is starting his work. Let me give you a Q&A. Can you arrange for me in your mind what is the sequence of mentorship? Dear mentor, I'm a member of your church. Can you help me and show me which I should start with first? No, don't answer. You may be wrong. Because your journey should start with relationship. You see, many of you have even missed it. Is it not a relationship with God that starts your journey? Are we together now? Now watch this. 
I'm joking with this, but it's a very serious thing. Because some of us, this is what you have. Your spirit man and your soul is full of great information that can transform you. There is hardly anything taught in church that is new to you. But the results refuse to reflect in your life. And that is frustrating you. It's easier to fail in ignorance because your awareness that you don't know helps to soothe even the pain of the failure. But when you know that you have labored so much to accumulate all of the various faculties of knowledge and your life refuses to change. You have witnesses around you who testify that you are serious with God. They, they saw you at the book stand when you were buying all the books. So they expect a result and they themselves are waiting for you for encouragement. But after three years, they find out you are all the same. And they have body languages that remind you that don't you think of reconsider this pain you are giving yourself. Hearing is my father glorified when ye bear much fruit. Now it is evil for me to expect someone who just got born again to have all the results that are needed. There is a process. There is a progression. And Jesus grew. Men grow. But with time, and believe me, that time is not forever. There is a time allotted when certain evidences, everything may not square up in one day, but your life must begin to conform to an experience that demonstrates in experience that you have received the reality of God's life. The sequential arrangement of truth. Let me tell you without any bias and, and with all honor and respect as we round up. Do you know why many preachers who come from the north are very powerful? Because the north has mastered the art of foundation. Now, they may ignore the ministry of the Holy Spirit. They may ignore all of this, but the foundational precepts. Are we together now? They will mentor you. So when you have the privilege of going through those backgrounds, many of us here who came from orthodox backgrounds, you see how stable your spiritual life is. Because although they did not teach you the Holy Spirit, although they did not show you certain things, sowing and reaping, that foundation of morality, that foundation of the fear of God became a very solid template. So when the Holy Ghost came, it was easy for him to continue because he met a formation that was already accurate. This is the one problem with charismatics. God is faithful. Are we together? But this is the one problem. The guy got born again and by next Saturday, he was a deacon. He was a what? It's not an insult, please. If you are a deacon here, don't worry. That's why God is helping you here and teaching you. And then while he was a deacon, because now the church needed expansion fast, and there was need for pastors. Are we together now? And because of the guy's loyalty, quickly he was ordained. Imagine the kind of ignorance that was ordained. Now, that guy has access to the minds of people at least six hours every week for ten years. Whereas he himself has not started learning. And you are mandated to listen to him. As an act of your loyalty to God and the structure you are under. Here comes your destiny. At the mercy of someone who is yet to even understand what light is. So the guy continues to impart various versions of his ignorance. And you receive them sincerely. And you are worse than when you were before you came. Because before you started going to church, you were reading books. At least it was helping small. Now, because you submitted fully, your life started going down as a reflection of the ignorance of a man. No man can be trained enough to get into ministry, but there is an appreciable level. Are we together now? Paul, a man approved of God. Something about the teaching on finance was not sequentially arranged for you. Now, I hope you know I'm teaching apostolically. I'm not just talking about the baptizing church. Something about finance was taught. It was taught from the standpoint of lust. 
The lecture was not complete because the lecturer was not trained well. So the lecturer taught you the only part of the finance teaching was that you must, you must, you must be this, you must have this. If you cannot have this and you jump around admiring everything around anybody until the spirit of theft comes on you. See, let me teach you something. It's a law in the spirit. That's why I apologize. We're going to pray now. Watch this. Let me teach you how spirit things work. A few minutes and then I, I, God will help us. Eh? If I want the spirit of lust to come on me, for instance, I don't need to look for it. You remember you have your human will. Let me show you a scripture. Consistency is a voice in the spirit. I want to teach you something. That means when by an act of your will, you consistently do a thing, you begin to attract the spirit component of that dimension to come to you, good or bad. That means that this guy wants to receive, let me use something positive. God forbid, Lord, say God forbid. Now, let me use something very positive. Let's, let's say prayer or revelation. This gentleman has been coming to this church and seen Pastor Dele minister accurately under the spirit of revelation and he desires it. Are we together? There are many ways he can route it. One of the ways is that the more this guy continues to expose himself to the material of someone with that dimension, what happens is that that dimension in the Holy Ghost begins to be drawn to him. Consistency draws the spirit component of any dimension. So you, that means your consistency is a voice and is telling the spirit dimension, I am ready to be a slave to that dimension. Not in a negative way. Are we together now? Yes. He goes to pray every day and honestly, he knows that this prayer, I'm struggling. This grace is not there. But he's doing it as unto God and sincerely because he believed a man who told him that prayer was part of the tools for victory in the kingdom. One day, as he keeps praying every day like that, one hour, maybe in a group, he's attracting the dimension of the Holy Ghost called the spirit of prayer and supplication. There is a dimension. He can quicken you into that realm. Are we, are we together now? So what happens is one day, he will just go behind one tree and just be praying. That's the night of the arrival of that dimension. His two hours will become a night vigil. From that day, he himself will not be able to manage the grace for prayer on his life again. Are we together? So every time you give, what are you doing? There is a dimension of the grace of God that you are attracting to yourself through that act. When you continue to do it, a day will come when that dimension of God's grace called the power to prosper, the giving grace, the grace that abounds, making sure that you have all sufficiency, that grace will come upon you. That is the day you will start having testimonies that people will think you are lying. The same way you can steal as an act of your will, it's not the devil. Remember, Satan is one. There are not many of him. The devil as a person, he has arsenals, but he's one. And I assure you, you have not hurt him enough for him to disturb you. There are more people on earth who have caused him more headache that is disturbing now. So most times when we say Satan, it's not true. Do you know what it takes to be attacked by Satan? You must, you must do something for the kingdom that is striking. I mean, look at them. Okay, well, Billy Graham is gone. But there are people who have won souls too much. You just started now. Why will he just leave all those people and come and worry you? Satan left the whole earth when Jesus came and was waiting for Jesus to finish fasting. That means if you were in Jesus' generation, I said, Satan, you are this. Said, mm -hmm, I'm waiting here. I know the person I'm seeking. He uses a system to operate. Are we together this morning? And so this brother can steal because of the lust of your eyes. It is not a spirit. 
But the moment you stole, the spirit of theft felt something that was drawn to you. But it was not enough to bring in. Consistency is a law. It's a voice. When you steal again, and you steal again, and you see the benefit of stealing, and then you steal again, you continue to draw that spirit. A day will come, you will not steal by your ability again. You will steal by the spirit. And that spirit will start working in you the same way it works in a prophet. No matter where they hide that money. Have you seen people like that? Hide the money under the carpet. They will just stand. And leave the carpet. They themselves don't know what influence they are under. Some of us, our children here are giving us headaches. We don't know how it started. They continue to watch movies. They continue to watch films. And while you thought they were watching entertainment, there was a spiritual reaction. The spirit does not know whether it's movie or not. Anywhere your attention is drawn to it will come. You become what you behold. You kept beholding. You kept beholding. And the spirit starts saying, someone is calling me. There is someone calling me in this family. And you kept calling, Maranatha, come, come. And one day, that spirit will come. The guy will steal his office. He will steal your, sal your salary. You will put 16 words, your password, complicated words. You will look at it like this. One, five, star, hash. Now, he does not, it's the same way a prophet operates. Now, I'm telling you this. You will come back and see his stolen money and you will ask him, this is him, this is the police. Young man, what did you do? And he's standing in ignorance. He has become a slave to a dimension. The same way you can be so yielded to the Holy Spirit that sometimes you will be joking, yet you don't know you are prophesying. You are, you are that yielded. Listen, the goal of the Holy Spirit is not to keep talking to you every day. No, the language of God is light. Listen very carefully. God does not have to talk to speak. Understand this. The speakings of God is not always with words. And the spirit drove Jesus. The speaking is to acclimatize you to his methodologies. You get to a point where you are immersed in his person. Where he does not need to tell you. He moves you. Your body has been submitted through your consistency with him. So you can just stand and feel like you need to go to that shop and move and just see an accident happen. He didn't need to tell you an accident will happen. You have been so yielded. He moves you into his will. This is the level in your work with God where your coincidences become miracles because they are not coincidences. They are impulses of the spirit. You will walk to a shop and you start feeling unusually thirsty. You are on your way home. You are about to meet your wife thirsty for no reason and you look at a shop and you just stand there and say do you have malt and you just see a lady praying in tongues inside the shop ah, what am i doing here i came to buy uh, water and you look at her and the spirit of the living god huh who the spirit of the living god suddenly you will see that lady and he will snap that lady in your heart he will wait for you in the night when you are going to pray. The moment you go to pray. Lord my destiny. Open the gates. Heal the sick. You will be surprised that night. That while you are praying. God will suspend. Your passion for every other thing. And the moment you are praying. You will see yourself by that shop again. You will see that lady. You will start hearing the sound of children. Lord what are you saying? I rest my case. Let me not. Let me not. There are people who always enter trouble. Do you know why? It's not their fault. Anything bad that is happening, if you hear that they've arrested five people, you can bet that they are there. They are not thieves, but they are always getting into trouble. They have submitted themselves, sometimes through the weakness of the flesh, 
to the impulses of the destruction that wasted by noonday. The moment police wants to catch people that are smoking anything, you are minding your business in your bedroom. That's how you will get up. It's not like the devil is saying, let's go. You will just go out, you are strolling, and that day, you won't comb your hair, you wear three quarter, just you will have the appearance of a criminal. Let me tell you this, while you are laughing, take seriously what I'm saying. This is how many people continue to get into trouble. Continue to get into trouble. The weakness of the flesh because truths were not sequentially arranged to ensure that you are built. It's time. Has someone learned something today? Let me tell you this. I can tell you why although you are a leader in your church or a cell group, certain acts of the flesh continue to kill you. Sometimes it may be that certain trainings were not inculcated. In your spiritual upbringing, you were, taught, you were taught to trivialize the character of the spirit. Morality and excellence. And the reality, there is a difference between holiness and uprightness. Holiness is a nature. Uprightness is the outworkings of righteousness. It's not a gift. Is the advantage you take with that grace called holiness. So when you are not taught, you generically just believe holiness is a nature and it doesn't matter. And now you don't know how to explain the passions in your body. You have not been taught that you die daily. That it is when death works in you that life will work in others. You can pretend it for a while. But a day comes your wife will come and catch you watching pornography. Pastor, I'm not the only one. I've, I've spoken with other people too. We're all like that. Now, when a member who is growing sees you like that, the member is convinced that what he or she is doing does not have a remedy. You are not God, but you are his representative. So there is a level of... of um, there is a standard that is required and you don't have the grace for it so the grace is supplied but you must know how to engage it are we together what could be wrong what could be wrong with your prayer life what could be wrong with your word life what could be wrong with your passion for evangelism you were told that if you are not an evangelist, you don't win souls. Winning souls is something that happens after a revival meeting and you emotionally roam around the street for two weeks. And then after that, you are back. What could be wrong? Can we pray? Hold the hands of someone while you are seated. And let's pray. There is a generation that God is raising. Please pray. Pray in the spirit. We are rounding up for this morning. Pray. Praise the bread of life. That glorious spring. That washes our sins away. Praise the bread of life, Emmanuel, God with us, the one who saves. Praise the cup of life, that glorious spring, that washes our sins away King of kings Lord of lords faithful and true 
Lamb of God, we worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, pray, faithful and true, Lamb of God. you need to pray and say Lord rearrange my life again the random practice of spiritual truth is responsible for the limitation in my destiny set the ordinances of the spirit sequentially in my life so that my life can produce results the things I've exaggerated, bring them to order. The things that should be an emphasis that I've trivialized, stretch them to the boundary of their relevance. Shabarakatos. Just a few minutes and we are done. Ela parus kabaranda shega de balakatos embra takataba Lord I love you but I was never taught the relevance of a prayer life Hallelujah Listen listen many of us were taught prayer as a system of getting things the primary assignment of prayer that many of us have been mentored into thinking is that it is a system of getting things. So the moment you want to pray, you are thinking of getting things. For others, you have been taught that prayer is warfare. So the moment you want to pray, you are just thinking demons. The primary assignment of prayer is to change you. Jesus prayed and the fashion of his countenance changed. When the grace for prayer comes, it's not for warfare. When the grace for prayer comes, it's not for receiving things. It's a system allocated for the edification of the saints. That a man can pray until you molt like a snake. Come out of your old fashion into the new you. You can pray in two realms, pray in two anointings, pray in two dimensions. Not to fight demons. A man can go to the secret place, a weak man, and leave that place with fire. Please pray. Let's give ourselves two minutes to pray. Pray, pray, pray. Hela barakatosh kalibat. Empratos kela tatusi anahasa. Remember, I told you consistency. Don't say, Apostle, I don't have the grace for prayer. Keep praying. Pray your way into that realm. Holy fire burn upon my altar from within me spirit to take over holy fire burn upon my altar hey. holy fire burn upon my altar from within me, spirit to take over. Holy fire burn upon my own. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. 
and that is I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye